Hello, everyone. This is Al Fadi, and welcome again to a continuation of this series on refuting uh, the uh, claim about scientific miracles that are found in the Quran. So far, we have enjoyed actually pointing out the many errors in these claims and uh, using science, of course, and sometimes even the Quran itself is intended one thing and our Muslim friends are taking it the other way. For instance, the example about that the sun and the moon have their own uh, basically orbit when in fact, if you read it in context within all the passages in the Quran that deal with it, you discover that that's not the case. The case is like they're chasing each other on the same orbit. So, so right there, the Quran itself actually is making a and not just a scientific error, but a factual error as well. And uh, today we are going to talk about this idea that meteor meteorites, uh, when you see shooting stars, that mean that the heavenly beings, uh, angels, God, are throwing rocks at Satan or his demons who are attempting to eavesdrop on what's going on in heaven. And with me here is Dr. J. Smith to address this. Yeah, I mean, j just that right there is rather silly. Uh, even as you were saying it, I was smiling listening yeah. to it. It's rather one of these odd things that the Quran comes with, uh, comes out with, and I think these are nothing more than folk tales or tales that were that were in existence there in Arabia. The references you can uh, that that refer to this are Surah chapter 15, verse 16 to 18, uh, chapter 37, verse 6 to 10. Chapter 55, verse 33 to 35, chapter 67, verse 5, chapter 72, verse 6 to 9, and chapter 86, verse 2 to 3. So multiple times it keeps coming back with this recurrent theme. Right. And what they're saying, and when you go to the traditions, there's jinn. Now, who are jinn? Explain jinn to people. What are they? Well, uh, jinn is like, you know, Islam, by the way, teaches that there are angels. There is no fallen angels. And then you have Satan, right? Yeah. You know? and uh, made basically uh, uh, from a you know this different substance and then you have jinn also that Im involves uh, you know some sort of a spirits file a fire they're you know, made different. out of fire yeah and they're sometimes they're malevolent sometimes they're uh, pretty but sometimes they're docile so they're not really evil yet they can do evil things and they can convert to islam they can convert to islam but it's okay. fascinating they are inanimate because they can appear and disappear. Yes, and you don't see them. I mean, they, they, they can, tell you that they're they, around you, but you don't see them. There are some, you can even get some photographs of, of that have been photographed. Uh, mm -hmm. People have taken pictures of beautiful rock outcroppings when they develop, and there's a jinn staring at them out of the rock. And Muhammad, in honor of jinn, he conducted an entire chapter named after them. So it's, the they're mysterious beings that are riddled right through the Quran. Right. But what's fascinating is this idea, according to their traditions, they would go to the heavens to hear their Quran recited. And as they're trying to listen to the Quran recited, Allah, or God, or the angels, toss these these meteorites, now we know them as meteorites or mm -hmm. asteroids, right, uh, right. the ones, the large ones that go in the distance. And you see them almost every night. You can go up and you can watch them. In fact, sometimes in the springtime in Britain, uh, we would go out uh, around February, around this time, around March, and you could see whole showers that would come through. And they'd say, these are the showers are coming through. It, co it happens on a yearly basis as we're going through a tail of a, of a large asteroid. Right. And so you see enormous amount of them, and they're always going the same direction. They're all going the same direction. And I used to think this is, so only the jinn would only ever go to listen to the Quran on that time of the year. <laughs> that, that in and of itself is laughable. But stop and think, meteorites are made out of carbon dioxide. What are jinn made out of? Well, we just said, I mean, it just, uh, it's intangible material. Intangible material. See. So how yeah. could carbon dioxide chase them away? It would just go right through them. And, and the other interesting thing, I mean, we just I just mentioned to you that according to the teaching of the Quran, that jinn could convert, right? Mm -hmm. So if they're eavesdropping on Quranic recitation, isn't that like witnessing to That's them? That's pretty about good. Why chase them away? Exactly. Bring them home. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's illogical on top of that. I mean, it's fascinating. You can see this is looks like it's a good tale. It's been around. This is a good Arab tale. And if we did a little bit more research, we could probably even find the source for it. And yet those kind of borrowings that we have found yeah, all over, we talked about the seven, the number seven in the last episode. We've right. talked about uh, Hippocrates, talking about where the milk is made and where right. the bees, uh, the whole thing with bees, completely misconstruing what the Greeks were saying and incorporated, putting it into the crown. Borrowing all the time. Be careful what you borrow. We're going to see a big one coming up yet to come uh, in the embryological cycle. Because if you borrow a mistake, the mistake comes with the borrowing. In this case, this is a real mistake. 
So right. what they say is a proof is turning once again. Have you noticed? In every case, these proofs have turned into mistakes. Well, the bee was very clear exactly, exactly. Uh, about where the where the honey is made. That was a, a seemingly innocent borrowing from Hippocrates turns into an enormous mistake because Hippocrates got it wrong, which makes sense. How could he have known really right. that the uh, the bees didn't make the honey in their in their own belly? So things like that we are now bringing up, not proofs, mistakes. Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, you know, uh, we you're used to the Bismillah, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, right? You know that there is something called Taweed, uh, or where you would start by saying "A'udhu Billahi min Shaitan Rajim." Shaitan Rajim, Satan who is, you know, chased by missiles. You know, so you ask a Muslim sometimes, do you know why he's called this way? And sometimes they don't even know. I mean, when you even mention to them, this is because the Quran says that shooting stars are thrown at him. That's why you are invoking the name of Allah so that he protect you from the Satan who has been, you know, chased, chased by, the, by these missiles. By the and and it's and like, yeah. Some of them look at you like, I didn't even know that, you know. <laughs> so even to them, they, it sounds strange, you know. And the idea, by the way, when you go to Hajj and you go to these three pillars and you throw rocks in honor of what Abraham supposedly have done, when Satan was chasing him to prevent him from offering his son as a sacrifice. So he was throwing rocks at him, and they're doing it that way. So was, was Satan appearing as a human being, as a person, as a body, you know? How, how did that happen, and, and where did the story come from to begin with? May I ask you one more question? Yeah. Why are there three Satans? Well, that's a good thing because the, supposedly the journey took three days. So every day he was doing this, and that's why you have a pillar for every day. Now, the three-day journey is taken out of the Bible. I'm still going to ask you again. I'm going to push back on this. Why are there three pillars? Well, that's the idea. Or are there three goddesses? Hey. Is this paid as part of the hey. satanic yeah. verses? Alat al-manat and aluza. It's quite possible. Can you see? Even when you look at that, you need to go back to pre-Islamic right. times. You need to go right. to the Nabataeans who have the three goddesses. Mm -hmm. It could be that this is nothing more than a Nabataean borrowing. Or myth, you know. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna. Yeah. There's a whole pile of these historical anachronisms yeah. we're gonna do in another sec, a whole another series. Absolutely. That's gonna come up. And one of the things we're gonna do in that series, we're gonna look at all the practices that happened in Mecca and see how almost every one of those practices can, can be traced back. back to Nabataean times. Amen. And one of the things that I'm doing also uh, in my own work is I'm trying to uh, uh, make a connection between some of the possible readings in early Quranic manuscripts with that region as well. Because there are certain, uh, you know, markers that you can look at and that can indicate this. So, so you see what's going on. You know, we are in a new era and there is a lot of information out there, archaeological, uh, uh, manuscript evidence, uh, linguistic evidence, uh, and, and many other sources that we can rely upon to begin to make connections. Because I want my Muslim friend to ask himself sometimes these questions. Where did this practice originate from? Don't tell me the Quran said so. Uh, no, we need to know where did this practice originate from? What, what's the significance about, like we heard, three pillars, throwing stones? Now, the Quran never said anything, by the way, about Abraham being chased, you know? These are stories that are, came, came about to explain things. We don't know when these stories, uh, uh, you know, came about. When did they emanate? You know, who is the source of them? Did they exist before the time of Muhammad or after the time of Muhammad? And the list can go on and on and on. So once again, hopefully you'll find in this series that pretty much is intended really to refute these scientific miracles. And the more we do it, myself and Jay, we're discovering more substance for other series as well. So thank you for joining us and have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International, and together we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.